Hello, um, thank you for the introduction um, and hello to the audience. I'm really glad that you're here. Um, as Katina said, my name is Laura Raybuck. I do work for the VA, um, specifically for the Cooperative Studies Program. Uh, we do a lot of really cool medical research that I would love to talk about, but that's different talk for a different day. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a white woman in my 40s with gray and brown hair and a ponytail. And as this title slide says, I'm here to talk about uh, jargon madness, a plain language exercise. So on slide two, we're going to go through the standard disclaimer that the views expressed here are mine, and they do not necessarily reflect the, the position or policy of VA or the U.S. government. And then slide three is a second disclaimer that I wanted to put out for for excuse me, for clarity, um, we can't name commercial products, services, or non-federal organizations in these presentations, um, which makes sense on many levels. That said, some of the context in these slides might be missing. So if something is unclear to you, because it seems like I'm talking in a roundabout way, uh, that's on purpose. <laughs> it needed to be that way. So feel free to email me and we'll connect the dots there. Okay. Slide four shows us where we're headed. So I wanna talk about uh, why you might want to do something like Jargon Madness um, with the staff in your agency. What is Jargon Madness? How did this even come about? Um, and then also, oh, now, we're, now I'm seeing myself. Let's make that, there we go. Do not like to see that, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then we'll uh, focus most of the presentation on how you might wanna develop your own Jargon Madness event um, using our experiences as a starting point lots of different ways to do this. Okay, so here on slide five, lots of reasons why you might want to consider Jargon Madness. And the first is that in my very, um, very official research, having a response to Jargon is universal. And the, the presenter who just went, Heather, I wrote, took a note there. Yes, she said that bad writing is delicious. And I really think that's the same with Jargon. Everyone, everyone has something to say about it. Uh, jargon Madness itself is a plain language appetizer. So people who don't want to fully commit to the incredible awesomeness that plain language is, they are generally willing to commit to focusing on one part of it, right? Just focusing on jargon, focusing on voting and jargon madness. Like it, it just, it's a starting point for them. Uh, jargon madness, one of the things I love about it, it's a conversation starter that, that cuts across the org chart. GS5 to 15, all the job titles, all the departments, all the offices, like this is something that the conversations go up the chain, they go down the chain, they go diagonal. It's truly for everyone. It is both an engagement activity and an education activity. You can dial either one of those up or down depending on your goals and depending on your audience. So there's flexibility there. And perhaps most critically, it's a fun way um, to get people to think about the volume of jargon in our work, um, how jargon can be unclear, and how it conflicts with efforts to communicate clearly. And one of the earlier presenters today talked about building trust. And I think that the fun aspect is really important to building that trust and kind of making this a community thing. We all use jargon sometimes. Um, we are all often annoyed by jargon. Um, fun things are things you'll come back and do year after year. So if you want to do Jargon Madness, you know, as an annual event, you're going to want it to be fun. People will remember and come back. When things are fun, they tell their coworkers. So that potentially increases the size of the audience that's participating. Um, but perhaps most importantly, I think the fun aspect is also an important delineation that this is not like a shame-based antagonistic activity. Um, no one learns that way. So let's, you know, by keeping it fun um, and focusing purposefully in that way, I think that's a really important, uh, important way to build trust. And then um, last two reasons, Jargon Madness is, it really allows for asynchronous participation. Um, you know, so it's not a meeting someone has to attend or a training they have to attend. They can kind of pop into it and vote and comment and participate when they want. Um, and it fits really well with remote or hybrid schedules. This is great for shift work. Um, it's great for teams and agencies that are across time zones, which is everybody. Um, and yeah, definitely in the COVID, you know, post uh, in a pandemic kind of world, uh, this is a, a great way to reach a wide audience. Okay. So in slide six here, I want to make sure, um, this is a big audience, I don't know a lot about this audience necessarily, but I want to make sure we're on the same page about jargon uh, and about the basics of college basketball, which is where the madness comes in. So on this slide, um, there's kind of two different 
definitions for jargon. And there's one group that's the tech, I'll call it the technical definition. And so that's that jargon are, is special words or expressions that are used by a particular profession or group and are difficult for others to understand. And we know this, right? If any of us are going, you know, if we're in an ambulance headed to the ER, uh, we really want those paramedics and that receiving ER team to be using all the jargon they need to use in order to swiftly and effectively communicate information about like your health status and what tests have been administered and what the ER team needs to do. I mean, like you want them using jargon. In our situation for jargon madness, we use this third definition. This is the one where people are like, oh yeah, I know that. And that definition of jargon is that it's obscure and often pretentious language marked by circumlocutions, long words, confused, unintelligible language. And that's the one that, that um, covers state of the art, um, leverage, oh my, how is my brain blanking on jargon right now? All the good ones, bandwidth, um, pivot, change agent, you know, the ones that make people just like kind of slump in their chair. That's the jargon we're talking about. And then for slide seven, college basketball. So jargon madness is loosely based off of a college basketball event of a similar um, name to Jargon Madness. Its name is trademarked, so we're going to just not talk about it, but if you were to look on the internet about a very popular college basketball event that happens in March, you would find out. Um, and just some brief basics about that. Um, the, this college basketball version, there's 64 teams, technically 68. Let's not get into that. 64 teams are put into a bracket. Each pair plays one game, and the winner advances. And so as a result, there's 64 teams, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, then there's a champion. All of this takes place in about two weeks, which is just ridiculous. Um, and the viewership of these games is like around the Super Bowl. So it's like kind of a thing, like it's got traction with a lot of people. Uh, did not have a lot of traction necessarily with like a giant portion of um, our office. So it, it can be useful to explain some of the basics to people. Not everyone knows, you know, about this event, even if it's like Super Bowl big. Okay, slide eight is a college basketball bracket. This is just an example. A lot of people, part of the enthusiasm around this event um, is that you pre-fill out the bracket of who you think is going to win. Politicians do it, celebrities do it, um, zoos do it. it. Could be really interesting if you have people um, visible people in your agency, if you're doing this like in a really big scale, if they want to pre-fill out a bracket with like what they think will advance. Um, but this is like a key component of both jargon madness and, and kind of where it comes from in the basketball side. Okay, so how did all of this come together? Slide nine is about um, the genesis of jargon madness. And so in 2012, a very popular business magazine started jargon madness. They modeled it off of the college basketball event. And their stated goal was, and I quote, to identify the single most annoying example of business jargon and to thoroughly embarrass all who employ it and any of these other ridiculous expressions. They used uh, 32 bits of jargon. People voted um, daily on these matchups through a bird themed social media app, and it took about a month. So uh, slide 10. A coworker, really awesome coworker. Hello, Margaret, if you're listening. Um, she brought this to my attention, and we immediately realized we had to figure out a way to do this um, to DIY it ourselves. So we started our first Jargon Madness um, in 2013. The champion, the winner of that, was giving 110%. And I always attribute that to the fact that I work with researchers. There's a lot of biased statisticians, data analysts, number people who just were very offended by the idea that there would be more than 100%. Um, and we've done it three additional years. Um, over that time, we've done it four different ways. So um, let's talk about how to do these different ways. Okay, slide 11 is a preparation checklist and kind of where we're gonna go for the rest of this presentation. But with this, you can, these are you know suggestions on how you could start thinking now um, in order to deploy March Madness um, within your agency or within a piece of your agency or within you know your center, whatever level you want to do this at. Things you'll want to think about um, are you know leadership buy-in. Uh, you want to think about your audience. Who is that? Where are they? Um, confirm if you have champions. See if you have any um, partners that want to help you with this work. Who is going to help you do it? Uh, lots to think about with language. We'll definitely touch on that. Uh, you want to figure out your bracket size and timeline. 
where you're going to host it, how voting is going to work. See, there's a lot that goes to this. Um, how to identify the jargon, marketing, that's really important. But if you're me, that gets pushed to the end always. Um, ideas for education, which is like the best. And you could totally use things that Heather just talked about, these before and afters. And uh, if you want to do any sort of post-event survey. So let's jump into this. Okay. Leadership and audience, I feel like this, you know, you want to confirm with the necessary levels um, that this is a thing that, that uh, you know, they want to support. And when you approach um, leadership, find a way to attach jargon madness to like whatever it is that they are already doing. Um, this could be existing education goals. It could be employee engagement goals. Um, they could be communication goals. They could be customer service goals. And you could say by talking about this in kind of thinking about jargon that might improve, you know, the way that we interact with customers, you know, things like that. Similarly, start thinking about your audience. What do they need? You've already heard this in other presentations. Um, who are they? And that way you'll start to dial in um, the experience for them. If you're talking to a particular group, um, you might want to have different kind of education components that really focus on that group. Okay, I'm not, well, this is slide 13, uh, champions and partners. Neither of these are necessary. They could really help. So a champion is gonna be someone, um, probably like a senior management type person who's really gonna like rally for you. They're gonna like get into meetings and like support it. They'll you know help you eliminate roadblocks um, and also can provide really good moral support, which is great. And then partners obviously can help with the workload. So they might be able to help with marketing, creating education events. And the partners are all around you, right? It might be the plain language groups um, in your agency. It could be employee engagement. It could be employee education, high reliability people, um, quality assurance folk. I mean, like there's just so many groups that exist in every agency that would be a natural partner to something like this. For uh, slide 14, staffing, we've used two. That was by default. Um, that's what we have in, in my very small team. Um, first year is obviously the most time consuming. It does get better with subsequent years. And as you would expect, the more you prepare, the easier it is. Um, but, you know, again, you could scale this bigger. You could also do it theoretically as, as a team of one. Okay, let's talk about language. So, and I forgot to start my timer. And so I don't know where, I, okay, we're doing all right. Uh, language. So, this is slide 15. There's a couple of trademark phrases. You will want to stay away from those phrases um, lest you incur the ire of the NCAA. Um, so that's NCAA March Madness, it's March Madness, and then the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, and Final Four are like as the bracket gets smaller. If you have questions about how you can use this, uh, do not use this slide <laughs> or like how to proceed with this. This slide is not legal advice. I should have put that on there. Um, work with, you know, uh, your legal teams in your agency. They can help suss out, you know, maybe you can use part of it or not. I don't know, but I'm just going to say maybe just don't um, and find alternatives instead. Madness itself is not um, trademark. So you're totally fine using jargon madness. And as best as I could tell, um, the very popular business magazine didn't, so let's hope. Okay, slide 16 is another about language, and this um, is to be purposeful in your voice and tone when you're constructing this. And I think that goes back to maybe one of the first presentations, I wrote it down somewhere. Oh, well, I put a note um, about building trust with positivity. And I think that's really important for this as well. Um, so we set the voting up to be that people are voting for the most confusing piece of jargon, right? And that was purposeful. We want to have a conversation. This is, you know, these, as these bits of jargon advance, it's not a like, what is the worst? What is like the most horrible that you hope is never said again? And honestly, sometimes we're thinking that and people can vote however they want but the language that we use is around the most confusing and that's so that it can be a conversation. If bandwidth keeps moving along and people wanna argue about that because they use it or it makes sense to them, it, we can look at that and be like, there's friction here, right? Like this is advancing because it is confusing to folks. Um, another reason that we're purposeful with that is that you know most people use jargon. So these words, whatever number you pick, 64, 32 or 16, these are words that you might use, that your colleagues use, and almost certainly your supervisor or boss uses. Um, so going with most confusing is also just wiser instead of saying what is like the most annoying you never wanna hear again. Um, 
what's considered jargon isn't universal, again, with the bandwidth example, but also we really um, didn't want to use like the popular business magazine approach of like, what is, you know, what is the most annoying? We want to thoroughly embarrass people because that shame is not a motivator. <laughs> um, and that's not a learning tool for really anybody and definitely not adults. Um, and so that didn't fit with our approach. So you'd want to be um, purposeful in yours as well. Okay, slide 17, bracket and timeline. Like I've said, you can choose the size. Um, I really recommend 32. Feel like it's a total Goldilocks number. 16 could be super fine. It's a short run, could be great for a first event. It could be good for a small group. Um, we had a suggestion from, <laughs> from participants after the first year that they wanted a bracket of 16 just for acronyms. Um, and then we just decided that, I mean, it really just doesn't work because they're all kind of equally confusing. And then it just, you know, it'd be kind of arbitrary. Um, I will say that while using 64 is just, it's like, it's one more round. It is a lot more work, totally worth doing it. Um, if you want to do it, go for it. But just like, it's kind of a logarithmic level of work and we have to find more of the uh, jargon, you know, you're going to have to do more prep and advertising and things like that. Um, one thing about the bracket is you want to think about and whether or not you want to include the audience in this part is if you're going to um, purposely seed the bracket. So you're going to decide who's battling who um, for the beginning, or if you want to draw names out of a hat. Um, drawing names out of a hat could be really potentially engaging for a particular audience to kind of see how it goes. So again, you'd have to choose that on your own. Slide 18 is a um, breakdown of our timeline from this year. So we did 32 contenders, Goldilocks number. We did it over five weeks, also totally works. We didn't perfectly align it with the start of the college basketball version, but it's close enough, um, which is useful because people are seeing this in the grocery store. The brackets are just everywhere, right? Like in popular culture. So starting around the same time, like we kind of tried to use that as part of our marketing. And then um, as the Jargon Madness event proceeds, the timelines get a little bit smaller. And that's because participants understand. They know what's happening. They know what to expect. They've already voted once, you know, like they are, they, they get it. Um, and so we can move a little bit quicker. The times it's gone longer than five weeks, it can start to drag a little bit in my experience. But again, I don't think that that's a deal breaker. Uh, okay, slide 19 is also a continuation of the timeline. The things that we do for each round, um, you know, we were like, voting is open. Today's the last day to vote. Um, we had at least one education or engagement kind of thing in every round. Um, you know, we're responding to conversations, encouraging conversations, we're creating the surveys, um, we're updating the actual bracket. And then obviously, whatever your software of choice is for keeping organized, use it for this thing. There's a lot of moving parts. All right, another thing you'll want to think about here on slide 20 is your hosting and voting plans. And we've done a, a bunch. We've had a large paper bracket on the wall in a busy hallway where people voted by stuffing things in a decorated shoebox. Uh, that was actually really cute in a lot of levels. We've hosted it on an internal blog and had people vote through voting software. Most recently, we used um, collaboration software that rhymes with microfoft leams <laughs> and used um, survey software for voting. Basically, we use what's free and readily available. This is a challenge that we'll talk about later, but one of the things, um, that is an issue with accessibility is the bracket, like figuring out a way that this is available to everyone in your audience. Um, the, the, the weak spot is the bracket. Um, so that's something that if you can think about that in advance and maybe get a partner on board, whoo, you'll be in a good spot. Okay, slide 21 is about jargon contenders. Definitely fun. I would say the best way to do that is to ask for suggestions from your audience. So um, they will tell you, <laughs> they have feelings. They will tell you about their feelings with the jargon. Um, it's great. You will want to let them know again, like what definition are you using? You know, are you gonna have the kind of open, like whatever is kind of um, difficult pretentious language or are you dialing it into a really specific technical definition? If you need to supplement suggestions, there's plenty online. Um, yeah, the internet is full of lists of jargon. And then one of my favorite things is since our first Jargon Madness event, people will send you suggestions in the off season. It's great to have an entire folder and outlook um, of suggestions that people send. I'm doing a time check, okay. 
Slide 22, marketing. I mentioned this a little earlier. The better your marketing, probably the more reach you'll have, right? Um, this has always been a little bit harder for me, but there's uh, the sky is the limit. We've only really treaded water in this space. You could do guest blog posts, you know, throughout your agency, newsletter blips, obviously announcements at meetings, there's listservs, um, you know, encouraging other people in strategic spots to also promote it or advertise it. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people on this call that would have 10 other ideas that would be probably even better. Let me know what those are. <laughs> um, okay, slide 23 and 24 are gonna focus on education. And this to me is like the best part. Okay, identifying jargon is like definitely fun, but this is the best part. So you have a somewhat captive audience for a determined number of weeks, right? Let's say we're doing the 32 contenders and you choose a five week format. That's a lot of time to have people who are just kind of hanging out, maybe thinking or, you know, visiting a space where you can, you know, engage them on plain language topics around jargon. These have the added benefit if you're doing a digital format of breaking up some of the posts. So it's not all just like mechanical vote now, voting is closing, vote now, voting is closing. Like it creates more of a natural uh, conversation and rhythm. You'll definitely want to vary the type. And slide 24 goes through a couple of the types um, or like kind of different clumps that you could consider. I'm sure people on this call like intrinsically would know what that is, but like the before and after examples, great. That would be a perfect way, you know, to as a, a perfect educational opportunity for people to do them, for people to see them, to have a quick like 15 minute, like, hey, drop in and like, let's do an edit. I don't know if that sounds interesting to me, maybe not to the audience. Again, know your audience. Um, but some of the things that we have done is introducing jargon alternatives. Um, again, I work in medical research. So we are dealing with jargon that is both medical and healthcare. We have a lot of really smart academics and boy, they love their own jargon. And then there's just like generic business jargon. So we're fighting jargon on three different fronts, constantly pushing alternatives. Um, you can encourage jargon awareness events, research about why we use jargon. That's really um, adult learners like to understand why they are not supposed to do something. And there's fantastic research out there about that. Um, there's research about the impacts of jargon. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of research about jargon. Um, definitely want to include humorous things for levity. You know, I mean, why not? There's some fantastic YouTube videos that are like recreations of like everyday things using only jargon, like one is a phone call to 911, and it's just really illustrates how ludicrous this is. Um, yeah, you can connect your jargon to agency values or characteristics, right? Like trying to connect that dot. VA uses um, eye care, which is a, um, I guess is jargon because it's an abbreviation, but it stands for um, integrity, commitment, advocacy, respect, and excellence. And so you are not going to be able to sell me on the idea that using jargon fits in with any of those. Um, so it's a great way to reinforce that sort of stuff. You feel free to email me for a list of things that go under this. Um, a lot of those like didn't really fit with the presentation rules, but I'm happy to share them as starting points, um, especially if that helps you uh, get, get moving. Okay, so you've done your jargon, where you're getting ready for jargon madness. You're um, also gonna wanna think about a post-event survey. This is slide 25. You're gonna to wanna to decide if you even need this. Um, like, are you measuring something for all? Don't survey just to survey, um, but think about what you need to collect and when you want to collect it. Is it at the very end? What about people who drop off? Um, is it after the last vote? Is it after the winner is announced? Like there, it's just a, you know, a kind of a, a minute detail, but you know, planning it in advance will make it easier for you when the time comes. Okay, and then some things to anticipate. So this is slide 26. These six things should pop up. <laughs> it, I feel like this is kind of, if everyone's interested in jargon, people are also definitely gonna have responses and um, be ready for these, right? So the first one is somebody will inevitably say, oh, but such and such isn't jargon. That is a metaphor. That's an idiom. That's an analogy, right? And so in those situations, um, you know, we've been like, yes, that is true. Um, we're using a general definition, but also, <laughs> did you know that, you know, these metaphors, idioms, analogies um, don't necessarily translate across language, or they definitely don't translate across um, generations sometimes even, right? Like, is there another word or phrase that we could use to better convey this point? 
the one that probably shook me to my boots and happened, of course, the very first time that we did this was um, the second one. And that's when someone said, oh, but that's not jargon. That is in the name of my office and I'm the director, you know, and I'm like, oh, no. Um, and, you know, quick thinking, right? And so it's like, okay, that's true. That is in the name of your office and you are the director. Um, but there's confusion around that, right? Are there, you know, recent victories um, that we can highlight, you know, success stories or tangible examples that we can um, promote to staff and highlight to staff so that they actually understand the work that's going on? I'm happy to help you with that, right? So be ready for that one because there's a lot of business jargon that sticks around like business intelligence, enterprise, transformation, like all of these sort of squish words, like they're just in all of our agencies. So be ready for that. Uh, the third one that comes up is, you know, oh, that's not jargon. I use that. And so are you saying I'm confusing? You know, in, in those situations, like we all use jargon. Um, you know, there seems to be confusion around this one. Some alternatives might be using an alternative word, um, making sure you use this as a tool with a selective audience, right? Kind of the ER doctors and the paramedics um, or making sure that people, that that person explains it. Like if you're gonna keep using it, explain it because there's always new staff, right? There's always new staff joining VA. There's always new staff joining research. There's always new staff joining our center. Like not everyone um, will know that, which kind of feeds into the next two. You know, oh, that isn't jargon. Everyone knows what it means. That isn't jargon. Everyone should know what it means. It's the same sort of redirect. Um, and then the last one is people will say, you know, oh, that jargon, it's the worst. Why does anyone use it? You know, and I use that as an opportunity to remind people that, we all do use jargon, jargon. Um, and even sometimes when I deeply agree, it is the worst. It's the absolute worst. But, you know, again, we're trying to, this is a community. This is a, we're all in this together. Um, and so just kind of like, I also use jargon. Like one of, you know, one of the several ones that I use too often is this. Um, it's hard. Like we're all working on it, you know, just kind of trying to keep it in that positive um, open communication space. I'll, even if you sometimes are like, yes, I agree. <laughs> Okay, so looking at time, Ooh, I got I to wrap it up. All right, challenges are accessible brackets. Um, that's, yeah, that's just the thing. Making, if you do this over multiple years, how are you going to balance um, really good education stuff that you like to talk about every time with the fact that some people have been with you for multiple years and they already know the research and they don't want to hear it. Uh, um, slide 28, good graphics for branding, planning in advance. Um, yeah, and for slide 29, I wish you the best of luck. If you do jargon madness, I'd love to hear about it. Um, if you don't do jargon madness, but want to share ideas, I still want to hear about it. If you're in the VA, hello, I definitely want to connect with you. Um, and thank you. Thank you to the people who've been champions, people who've lightened the load, um, and the research staff who have seen the big picture since day one, pinged me with suggestions, made sure they had the bandwidth to participate. Um, felt that it was in their wheelhouse and really gave it 110%. Y'all rock. <laughs>